assalamu alaikum you have studied the gross features of spinal cord and today we will discuss the gray matter of spinal cord the spinal cord is composed of an inner core of gray matter which is surrounded by the covering of white matter on cross section the gray matter is seen as an h shaped pillar it has an anterior gray column which is called ventral horn this is motor horn while posterior gray column which is also called dorsal horn and it is sensory in function both are united by a thin gray commissure containing small central canal a small lateral gray column or horn is present in some of the segments of spinal cord which extends from the first thoracic to first or second lumbar spinal segments now what is the structure of this gray matter the gray matter consists of mixture of nerve cells and their processes with supporting cells called neuroglia and blood vessels the nerve cells are multipolar the relative amount of gray and white matter and the shape and size of the gray columns vary at different levels of the spinal cord the amount of gray matter to be seen at a particular level can be correlated with the mass of tissue to be supplied so it is greatest within cervical and lumbosacral enlargements of the cord why in these areas there are brachial and lumbosacral plexuses which supply the limbs so it innervate the muscles of the upper and lower limbs and so the amount of gray matter is maximum in the cervical and lumbosacral enlargements now we will discuss each of the column separately first of all ventral gray column or anterior horn that is motor it is composed of multipolar cells the large neurons which are called alpha neurons and the smaller are called gamma neurons the axons of alpha neurons pass as efferents in the anterior or ventral roots of the spinal nerves and innervate the skeletal muscles while the smaller nerve cells or gamma neurons axons pass out also in the anterior or ventral root of the spinal nerve and innervate intrafusal muscle fibers of the neuromuscular spindles the neurons of the ventral gray column are arranged in the form of several discrete and elongated groups or columns these groups are also called collection of nuclei now what is a nucleus in the central nervous system the collection of nerve cell bodies within central nervous system is called nucleus the nerve cells of the anterior gray column can be divided into three basic groups or columns these groups are medial group central or intermediate group and the lateral group now first of all medial group medial group which consists of two nerve cell collections one is called ventromedial nucleus and the posterior one is called dorsomedial nucleus now this group is present throughout the extent of spinal cord and it is responsible for innervating the skeletal muscles of the neck and trunk including the intercostal muscles abdominal musculature muscles of the neck uh, so this is the axial skeletal muscles so medial group is responsible for supplying the muscles related to axial skeleton central group or intermediate zone this group is present only in some cervical 
and lumbosacral segments. In the cervical segments, it consists of number one phrenic nucleus. You all know about the phrenic nerve and what is the root value of phrenic nerve? It is C345. So its nucleus is present from the in the third, fourth, and fifth cervical segments of the spinal cord and exons form phrenic nerve which innervate the diaphragm. The next is spinal accessory nucleus. We have uh, studied the 11th cranial nerve or accessory nerve which consists of two nuclei, one of which is spinal accessory nucleus. And this nucleus is present in the upper five or six cervical segments and it innervates the two muscles, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle. The lumbosacral nucleus is present in the second lumbar down to first sacral segment of the cord, but the function of this lumbosacral nucleus is unknown. So central group is not present throughout the length of spinal cord, but actually it is limited to some cervical and lumbosacral segments. Now lateral group is the most important group. Like central group, the lateral group is also present in only some cervical and lumbosacral segments. In the cervical segments, it extends from third cervical to second thoracic spinal segment and in the lumbosacral part it extends from the first lumbar to third sacral spinal segments. So these are the areas of cervical and lumbosacral enlargements where the amount of gray matter is maximum. So the lateral group innervates the skeletal muscles of the limbs. It can be further divided into two parts. The medial part innervate extensor muscles while the lateral part innervate flexors. Now the lateral group consists of nuclei. These are ventrolateral nucleus, supplies shoulder girdle and arm in the upper limb and gluteal region and thigh in the lower limb. The next is dorsolateral nucleus. Dorsolateral nucleus supplies the forearm in upper limb while part of leg in the lower limb. And the nucleus which is present most posteriorly that is called retrodorsolateral nucleus or also called post posterolateral nucleus which supplies the hand in upper limb and the foot in lower limb. Now posterior gray column and the nerve cell groups which are present in the posterior gray column. Posterior gray column is a sensory column. It is a major zone of termination of primary afferent fibers which carry general sensations and enter the spinal cord through dorsal root of the spinal nerve. It consists of various nerve cell groups or columns. Number one, lamina marginalis or postromarginal nucleus, which is present just at the apex of the posterior horn. The next group and the important group is substantia gelatinosa group. It is situated at the apex of posterior gray column. It extends throughout the length of spinal cord. It receives efferent fibers which are concerned with pain, temperature, touch and pressure from the posterior root. So actually it receives general sensations which are carried along posterior root or dorsal root of the spinal nerve. And the exons of these nerve cells which are present in the substantia gelatinosa group, they form 
contralateral spinothalamic tracts the next group is nucleus proprius like substantia gelatinosa this group of large nerve cells which is situated anterior to substantia gelatinosa it also extend throughout the length of spinal cord now most of the neurons in this group are interneurons the interneurons are neurons which connect the other neurons so they link the segments of spinal cord for intra spinal coordination they also receive fibers from the posterior white column that are associated with senses of position and movement that is called proprioception two point discrimination and vibration but remember these fibers do not terminate or synapse there but actually they supply some collateral branches to this group while they are on their way the next very important column or nucleus is nucleus dorsalis nucleus dorsalis is also called clark column or posterior thoracic nucleus this group of nerve cells situated at the base of posterior gray column now this part is called base of the posterior horn the apex then head then constricted part neck and then base of the posterior horn so this nucleus is present in the base of posterior gray column and it extends from the eighth cervical segment up to third or fourth lumbar segments please uh, remember uh, the level at which this nucleus is present so it extends from cervical eighth cervical segment quadrally to the third or fourth lumbar segments distally most of the cells are comparatively large and they are associated with proprioceptive endings from neuromuscular spindles and tendon spindles axons form dorsal spino cerebellar tract we will discuss these tracts in detail the next group is visceral afferent nucleus is a group of nerve cells of medium size situated lateral to nucleus dorsalis now you can see this is nucleus dorsalis and lateral to this small nucleus is visceral afferent nucleus it also extends from the first thoracic to third lumbar segment of the spinal cord it receives visceral afferent information so we have seen that some of the cell columns or nuclei they are present throughout the length of spinal cord like septomarginal nucleus substantia gelatinosa and nucleus proprius the largest one is nucleus proprius while other two the clark's column and the visceral afferent nucleus they are limited to some of the segments of spinal cord the lateral gray column or lateral horn is a small lateral projection of gray matter between the ventral and dorsal horns it extends from the first thoracic to second or third lumbar segment of the spinal cord it contains in intermedial lateral group and intermedial medial group in which intermedial lateral group of cells is important it gives rise to preganglionic sympathetic fibers a similar group of cells found in the second third and fourth sacral segments the intermedial lateral group is present in the second third and fourth sacral segments but it does not produce any lateral projection or lateral horn in these segments and in this these segments it give rise to preganglionic parasympathetic fibers in transverse sections of the spinal cord 
the anterior and posterior gray columns on each side are connected by gray matter that is called gray commissure the gray matter resembles letter h we have just seen the central canal is situated in the center of the gray commissure the part of gray commissure that is situated posterior to central canal is the posterior gray commissure while the part which lies anterior is called anterior gray commissure the central canal is present throughout spinal cord superiorly it is continuous with the central canal of medulla oblongata and above this it opens into cavity of fourth ventricle inferiorly in the conus medullaris it expands into fusiform terminal ventricle and terminates below within root of phylum terminate it is filled with cerebrospinal fluid and is lined with ependyma now this diagram is showing the transverse sections of spinal cord at various levels in the initial upper cervical segments up to third or fourth cervical segment the overall shape of the spinal cord is oval the lateral horn is absent the posterior horn is cylindrical while the anterior horns are narrow while down to up to fifth or sixth cervical segments there is more gray matter so the anterior horns become bulbous the shape of the spinal cord again oval in shape and the lateral horn is absent then in the thoracic levels we can see lateral horn this is section at the fifth thoracic segment so the lateral horn is present the posterior horn is again narrow and the anterior horns are narrow here it is also rounded in shape with lateral horn then this is transverse section at the second lumbar spinal segment here it is circular in shape the gray and white matter are almost equal while anterior horn becomes broad and this anterior horn becomes bulbous at the level of fifth lumbar segments the posterior horns are thick and amount of gray matter is more than white matter while in the lower sacral levels it is circular but smaller in size posterior horn thick anterior horn bulbous more gray matter and only a rim of white matter is present so at the end of this topic you must know that gray matter forms the central core surrounded by white matter the gray matter is palm h shape column which consists of ventral and dorsal horns connected by central gray commissure the ventral gray column is motor and the dorsal gray column is sensory receive general afferent fibers the neurons are grouped together as nuclei which form elongated columns the lateral gray column or lateral horn is present only from t1 to l2 l3 levels and the axons of intermedial lateral group form preganglionic sympathetic fibers the medial group of the ventral horn innervates the muscles of axial skeleton and present throughout the length of spinal cord while the lateral group of ventral horn innervates the muscles of limbs and this group is present in some specific segments of the spinal cord so this was all about the gray matter of spinal cord thank you so much